I would like to start by just getting some terminology on the table first, since for many of our listeners, uh, they will have never heard the term anarcho-capitalism before. And since you're a self-styled anarchist economist, I think we should start with anarchist. And most people associate the word anarchy with chaos or today maybe with Antifa, but that's pretty far from where you fall on the landscape. So maybe we should just start with how you think of this anarchist landscape and where the anarchist in your title places you. What I mean by an anarchist is somebody who believe, who is in favor of a society which has no government. And then the question that that raises is how do you define a government? That if you think about it, I don't believe there is any activity governments engage in that has not at some time and place been engaged in by non-government, by things we don't think of as governments. So my standard example is making war, that the uh, Norse armies that ravaged Anglo-Saxon England, as best I can tell, were entrepreneurial projects. That is to say, some leader with a good reputation said, hey, let's get a whole bunch of people and go raid England and we can get gold and get them to pay, off, pay us off to go away and maybe we'll grab some land and so forth. So that's what we think of as a government activity, but it was being done privately. And I think, I, as far as I can tell, maybe I'm missing something, but I think that's true of all government activities. So to me, at least, the defining feature is what in my first book I defined as an agency of legitimized coercion. And I went into that in much more detail in a much later article and then a chapter in my third edition of that book, where the idea is that in a functioning society, well, let me go back a step. Let me go back before humans. Uh, territorial behavior in animals is a pattern you observe in a fair number of different species, mostly birds and fishes, but some mammals too. And territorial behavior consists of an animal somehow marking the territory he is claiming. And then, uh, as it were, turning a switch in his brain so that if another member of his species and gender trespasses on that territory, he will fight and will fight more desperately the farther in the trespasser comes. Most of the time, a fight to the death is a loss for both parties, unless there's a very large inequality of force. Therefore, once the trespasser recognizes the commitment, it pays him to back off. Uh, for economists, this is sort of an animal version of the problem of bilateral monopoly, where in bilateral monopoly, where I have an apple and you want an apple and you're the only person in the world who values apples and I don't care about apples. That's worth nothing to me. It's worth $10 to you. If I could somehow commit myself not to accept any price other than nine fifty, you'd pay it. But if you could commit yourself not to pay more than 50 cents, I'd accept it. Well, this is an animal version of that. And then my view is that the way a functioning society works is that human beings have the equivalent of that, of the territorial behavior of commitment but it's not necessarily in geography, that we have a set of metal lines of what are the things that if somebody does them to me, I will be willing to bear what seem like unreasonably large costs to stop him. Uh, so my sort of standard example for that is uh, somebody grabs a kid's toy that your kid is playing with and runs off down the street, and you run after him yelling, stop thief. The toy costs you $3.00. The chance of tripping and hurting yourself by more than $3 is high. Uh, the chance if you fight him of getting more than $3 is damage is high. So you're willing to, in effect, bear a cost much lower, much more than $3 to enforce your view that that toy belongs to you and the kid. On the other hand, when the government tells you, by the way, you're going to be on a jury next week, which is exactly the same sort of thing. It's like somebody enslaving you. You don't react that way. You say, well, you know, if I can avoid the jury at a reasonable cost, I'll avoid the jury. But if it requires really large efforts to me, I'll put up with it. So I think of the government as an agency against which people drop the commitment strategies that normally enforce their view of, of their rights, of what they're entitled to do. And the claim, from my standpoint, the claim of anarchy is you do not have to have an institution of that sort in order for society to work. Uh, now, in terms of different kinds of anarchists, the obvious difference is going to be in what they imagine 
the, how they imagine the society works, what substitutes you have for the things that governments in the societies were used to do. And a anarcho-capitalist is somebody who, mag- who imagines a society where the basic coordination mechanism is voluntary exchange, it is market kind of transactions. And that includes, from my standpoint, if three people get together and decide to do something together because they're all in favor of it, that's still a voluntary transaction, even though there's no payment. So it's not a market in the, in the normal sense. Uh, and indeed, from my standpoint, a workers co-op is consistent with anarcho-capitalism as long as it's voluntarily formed, does not seize stuff from other people and so forth. That it's uh, just one, just a particular form of corporation, as it were. Uh, but there are other anarchists. Uh, there are anarcho-communists who, as best I can tell, imagine a society with no property rights or maybe at least no property rights and means of production, maybe no property rights at all. There are syndicalists who think they're anarchists, although it's not clear to me that what they're imagining is syndicates that control things aren't really governments, but I'd have to understand their views better than I do to be sure of that. Uh, but I think in, in modern day America, that quite a lot of the small number of people who call themselves anarchists, I think quite a lot of them are anarcho-capitalists, that it's a fairly well-recognized libertarian faction and has been for decades, uh, although there are certainly other people who call themselves anarchists who are nothing at all like that.